Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us here again on the Aqua Open Source YouTube channel. My name is Anais Urlichs, I'm the Open Source Developer Advocate here at Aqua. Now in this video I'm going to show you how you can scan private Git repositories through the Trivi CLI. Independently of whether you're choosing to scan GitLab or GitHub repositories, this tutorial is for you. So we're here on the Trivi GitHub repository. Once you're here, make sure to give us a star on GitHub. It would mean a lot to us. Then we can scroll down and we can find the documentation. We can open up. And here, first make sure that you have the latest version of Trivi installed. I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. I'm using Homebrew. Hmm. So, once we have the latest version installed, we can go to the documentation. And in the documentation, you will find the targets, the different kind of scan targets that you can have for misconfiguration scans, for vulnerability scans, for secret scans. These are the different targets that you can have. The most known, well known, is obviously container images that you can scan for vulnerabilities. But now you can also scan it in addition to vulnerabilities for misconfigurations. So you can find misconfigurations directly through the image scan as well. But that's for a different video. We are going to look at Git repositories. So with Trivi Repo, you can do a Git repository scan. It can be any remote Git repository. You just need the URL and it needs to be public. So we have here my Cloud Native Security Organization. It's basically an organization with different demo projects. You can check those out there. And we have here the website repository. And I want to scan this repository now for any issues, for any security issues. So we're going to go back to my terminal. And we can say Trivi repo and then the URL of our repository. And Trivi will perform the scan. Now, if you're new to Trivi, bear in mind that Trivi updates its database of vulnerabilities every six hours by default. And as you can see, there's one high CVE that has a fix available already. So I could go ahead and update the repository with a fix to that vulnerability. And I didn't have to clone anything locally. I just went ahead and checked out that repository. So here's additional information on the vulnerability that it found. As you can see, I don't have anything within my current directory. So Trivi didn't clone anything locally. I just had a look at this repository remotely and performed a scan on it. And let me know if there's anything wrong on that scan, which is amazing because I didn't have to clone it. I could just before I even used it in any way, I could check out whether there's any vulnerability in that repository. Now I want to perform a scan of a private Git repository. That's ultimately my goal. And to perform a private scan, here are several other scans I can do, but I can also scan private repositories. And for that, I need the GitHub token. Once I have the GitHub token, I can scan a private repository. And you can also perform license scans, secret scans, misconfiguration scans. You can generate an SBOM for a Git repository. An SBOM is basically an inventory list of everything that goes into a Git repository. And you can scan specific branches, commits, tags, um, we have another video on doing all of that, but this really focuses now on private repositories. So we have here the GitHub token that we need. The GitHub token, how do we create it? Um, don't have that here. Here, I do. Create a personal access token. That's what we have to do. So you have to go to your settings on GitHub, to developer settings, personal access token, and generate a personal access token. That's what we're going to do now. So head over two settings and then within within your settings you'll find your developer settings okay so you can head over to your developer settings and then create a personal access token now we need to create a classic token as you can see i have here a security test token that i used then we can generate a new token 
We need to have the classic token. I'm just going to use my password in this case. And then you need to check the repository that has access to all of your repositories. Um, just giving a name and generate the token. Now this token got deleted after the video, so don't even try to use it. <laughs> and then we can say export GitHub token. And we can paste our token there. Export GitHub token. And we can paste our token. Now, did I write it correctly? Yes, I did. Just delete that space. Now, you can also specify your GitLab token instead. Um, however, if you have specified both, then the GitHub token will take precedence over the GitLab token. And now we can go ahead and we can scan a private repository. So I have here in this repository, I have a secret repository. In this organization, I have a secret repository. And I can take the URL and this is say no trivi repo and scan that secret repository. Now, as you can say, see, didn't find any languages. What I can do now, if it doesn't find any specific languages, if it can't identify anything, I can say dash dash scanner. And then we can say the configuration, misconfiguration issues. Look for misconfiguration issues. Now I wrote the command wrong, probably. Commit to scanners. Okay, and we can perform the scan again. And now it's going to do a misconfiguration scan. And it found several misconfigurations in that repository, as you can see here. And this is pretty much how you do a scan of a private Git repository. Now, let me just elaborate why you can't use the fine grain token. As far as I understood, if you generate a new fine grain token, you have to give it access to a specific repository. If you specify that, then you only have access to the repositories that you have cloned local, uh, like in your part of the of GitHub, not in the GitHub organization. So see, here's all of them, the ones that I have clones of, as well as the ones that are just my repositories, but they are all under my name. They are not under the organization name. So alternatively, you could say all repositories, but that doesn't really make or only public repositories, but even all repositories doesn't really make sense because then you are not providing fewer, like you're not having really control over the, the um, information, like the access, the scope that you provide. So I would really go over here and just select that it has access to your repositories, to everything related and create a token here. Um, now I might be wrong in that, but uh, and do let me know if you think so. But basically, this is how I would um, set it up. <coughs> As always, I really hope this tutorial was useful. If it was, please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for upcoming videos. We would love to see you in one of our next videos. We also have monthly trivia office hours where we share the latest and greatest around trivia. So do join us there. The link to the office hours is below in the description as well as to the Slack community. So if you have any questions, do join us on Slack or start a GitHub discussion on the Trivi GitHub repositories. If you enjoy Trivi, also give us a star on GitHub. It would mean a lot to us. Have an amazing day and <laughs> see you next time. Bye bye.